Doak Campbell Stadium, possibly no more. Soon Jason, be, take it away. Soon to be the former Doak Campbell Stadium. Uh, last week, the school's anti-racism task force, otherwise known as the Historical Legacy Subcommittee, uh, there was a proposal to keep the name. They voted down the proposal, six to two. So now it goes uh, towards the full committee, uh, the final recommendation for their next meeting, where the full 30-member anti-racism, equity, and inclusion task force will vote on it. And it's hard for me to, because I was raised with it being Doe Campbell Stadium, Logan was raised with it being Doe Campbell Stadium. I was a student when they added Body Down Field in 2004. You're going to have a segment of, of the fan base, of the alumni base, that's always going to call it Doe Campbell Stadium. Just like they're going to call it what Washington's former NFL team, what their nickname was, what Cleveland's baseball team, what their nickname will soon be changing from. You're going to always have that. So I feel like Doe Campbell's name will always be associated with it. Mm-hmm. That being said, obviously this was brought forth by a former football player, former linebacker Kendrick Scott. And if there is a group of people, African Americans, uh, for, you know, former football players, former students, black students at the school, if they are genuinely upset by it, I feel like their opinion needs to be taken seriously on this. And you know, the, the record shows if you look at Doe Campbell's past, he was an he was an ardent segregationist. He was ardent in keeping black students, minority students, out of Florida State. So I feel like, I mean, yes, yes, he brought football in. He was, he was the president of the school when the school became co-educational, brought men into the school. First football team in 1947 is because of him. He should be praised for that. But we, you have to, with you're going to look at the good, you got to look at the bad. And there was a lot of bad things that he did when he was there. So I feel like it is time for a change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, no. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. And this was this has been talked about, what, for almost two years now. Um, and Florida State now has a committee. And they've got a few uh, players on on the board, too, that, that are giving advice. And I think that's a great idea, too. So, uh, you know, it will always be, you know, it's really just the Doak word. I mean, I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to Doak Campbell, Sam. It's all about, hey, I'll see you at Doak or whatever. And that's that's just, I don't know, that's not going to change right off the bat. It's going to take a long while. And, but uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities for when this name change happens. You know, how can Florida State also, you know, get a win out of it, too, with, you know, obviously – you're changing the name that helps a ton. Mm. Uh, and that, that's, that's great. But you know, Florida state is also struggling financially in this and in, in a lot of ways. And how could this maybe work out? Or do you give this to Bobby Bowden stadium and you do the field name differently? How does that work out? Because, you know, you're looking at Bobby Bowden now who, um, you know, is at a higher age, you know, could we get this, could this happen? Could this transition happen of the stadium name to him, you know, while he's with us to be able to celebrate this, I think is something that, you know, that I wouldn't be surprised if the program's looking at that, you know, try to get a timeline on when they can do that. But, you know, could it be, a, a you know, there's tons of other, there's a few other stadiums in college ball that are named after, uh, you know, a, a company or, uh, brand, you know, how, how can Florida State make some revenue out of this, you know, yearly or, you know, whatever they want to do, two, three year plans. But, um, you know, Florida State could, you know, this could be this, it's a, the right move and, and can really help in a lot of ways, too, if, if they want to go in the fin- financial route and finding sponsors. I, I, think, I think Logan is, is correct when he says that, you know, would I mind if they called it Coca Cola Stadium? Home Depot Stadium, whatever, you know, cor- and insert corporate sponsor here, Stadium. Mm-hmm. It would be cheesy, but it would bring in that much-needed money. That being said, I think from a PR aspect, I think it has to become Bobby Bowden Stadium. And I think Logan said it right there. This is a man who, you know, Bobby Bowden is 91 years old now. He's, he's up there. Let's just be honest. He's, he's more towards the end than he is towards the beginning. Let's just be perfectly honest with him. Not funny, MRHD. Not funny. Not funny at all. <laughs> it brings up bad memories. Bad, bad, bad. Wide right stadium. Most of them were actually in Miami, so let's be honest. Only mm. one of them. Yeah. Of, 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 try to buy that and feel. Tell them. Now, I, I do careful. think, I mean, it's. I mean, Bobby built, you know, everybody talks about Bobby Bowden built that stadium. I mean, it would be an incredible situation. And. Yeah. 
it'd be incredible to be able to call them, you know, that I'm heading to Bobby Bowden Stadium. I mean, it just sounds right. It, it just absolutely sounds right. You've already got Bobby Bowden Field, but, you know, I and, think there's – And most most people don't know until you say, oh, who is Bill Campbell? And then you have to say, oh, he was the president of the school and it became co-educational. He was the one who instituted the brain football team. Yeah, Mark, I guarantee you, we had to explain that to you, who Bill Campbell was. I had no idea. Summer. Right. So Bobby Bowden – Naming a Bobby Bowden Stadium would both bring back the fans, who some of them left the program, some of them became a little dis- disenchanted as to the right word with the program when when he left after the 2009 season. It would bring him back. Bobby Bowden did more for that program in, in, in his time. In his short first four seasons, he had us undefeated in the Orange Bowl in his, in his fourth season here at Florida State. It, it, it's, a, it's an honor he deserves at this point. So, and, and like Logan said, he's 91 years old. There's not going to be that many football seasons left where we can truly honor him. You know, he got vaccinated. He can come down the field. I say to him, Bob Bound Stadium, when the time comes, hopefully it's a long time from now, you can look at maybe corporate sponsoring it or like Logan said, maybe make the field corporate sponsor or something like that. You can look at that down the road. But for the 2021 season, it should be Bobby Bound Stadium. I think that's the way to go. I've been scanning the nation. I can't come up with an individual who is more tied to the success of that particular football program than Bobby Bowden. Nobody. I can't think of anybody because if you go to any of the other heavyweights across the nation, they've had multiple coaches who were successful. And obviously Florida State was successful post Bobby Bowden with a national championship under Jimbo Fisher, but he took it from nothing as Jason has outlined many times in the mid seventies to greatness. And he, you know, that, that required the contributions of many, but he was at the forefront and led that. um, I won't even call it a resurgence. It was an emergence. And I just want to address real quick to the comments you have on here from John, John Sarum. Thank you for watching the solution to having to know, that's not even proper English, but the solution to having to know and remember history, no long, no, I believe you meant no longer, use any names or reference to history, I guess. So you have no problem with putting somebody, somebody's name on the stadium who said, I don't want black students in the school with a football team that, what would you say, Logan, our football team is 80% black? 85%? Give me, yeah, yeah, it's high, like 85 to 90. 85% black. So you have you see no problem with that. If you want to put up a plaque, even if you want to argue maybe even a statue of him at the stadium and his achievement about making the school co-educational and instituting the first football team, I personally wouldn't like that, but I also personally wouldn't have a problem with that. But to put his name on the stadium when you're saying – this is a man who said, I don't want black people in the school with 85% black people on that football team. That's the problem with it, John. And I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. It's it's hard for me to listen to white people. And I'm going to say it. It's hard for me to listen to white people telling black people and telling people who are against this, well, this is why you shouldn't feel this way. You don't know how a black person feels. You don't know how Kendrick Scott feels or any other black person who has played football for Florida State may feel when they're seeing Doe Campbell up there and when they learn about that history. So it is something, and, and if it stays up, that's fine. If it comes down, that's fine. I'm still going to be a Florida State grad no matter what. I'm still going to come out to, this, to that, those games no matter what the name of the stadium is. But you just have to look at the history. You have to own up to it. Was Doe Campbell good for bringing football in and instituting being a part of the school that was co-educational? Yes. Was he an ardent segregationist? Yes. Which one is more important? No, it's a great point because it's something that we wrestle with in this country all over the place Mm -hmm. now in in looking at, okay, what did this individual do in regards to them contributing to the development of whatever area of the country that is versus what were their personal values and stances in, in this case and in many cases that we've seen debated over the last year in in terms of being a racist and um, so it, you have to wrestle with that. Uh, but in this particular case, to Jason's point, when you talk about, uh, y- you know, I would have certain issues with it if there was one black player on the football team. But just the the reality of having, to what they're telling us, 80, 85% of the roster 
being uh, black is just makes absolutely no sense and it's uh, offensive and it's not right. But you know what isn't offensive, Mark? It's never been offensive for the first 97 weeks. It isn't offensive here on the 98th week with Mark Rogers TV, the West College football, hitting that like button. That's never been offensive one time, right, Logan? It has never been offensive and never will be. And it'll future the future relies on hitting the like button.